NBA Tip-Off Show live for Thursday, April the 11th, right here on Wager Talk TV. I am Steve Merrill, joined by Ralph Michaels, Cal Sports LV on Twitter. We're going to take a deep dive into all five NBA games for this Thursday night. And it is honestly, Ralph, the quiet before the storm because every NBA team plays tomorrow and Friday. Nobody plays Saturday. Every NBA team plays Sunday afternoon to finish the regular season. And, of course, the playoffs just a week away. So we're going to take a deep dive here. Look how to play these games. We've got double-digit favorites in three of the five games tonight and uh, some totals as well that are worth looking at. By the way, this is a live show. Every 4.15 Eastern live show, we take interactive viewer questions during the week. So if you're watching us on the regular YouTube channel, YouTube shorts on your mobile device, or how about Instagram as well live, drop some chats in the comments or whatever app you're using and I will monitor them, and we will ask answer them real-time if you ask them real-time as we do the show. But, Ralph, of course, you're on earlier today with Wager Talk today with me and Teddy Covers. We did break down one of the games, which we'll get to in a moment, your Houston-Utah game. You actually gave a bonus play from your son, uh, Jeff Michaels, in the late game between the Warriors and Blazers, so we'll revisit both of those. But let's start uh, with the early tilt here at 7:10 Eastern, Chicago at Detroit. And right as I said, double-digit favorite, it's hovering. It was 9.5, but now it's 10. We're even seeing some 10.5, so the money is coming in on Chicago. Um, and you've got an interesting angle about these sub-500 teams that are laying a big number this time of year on the road. Yeah, Teddy, I just lo- – I, Teddy, excuse me, Steve. You know, I, I just <laughs> I looked this up. up now, and at least I didn't call you Prez. So, okay, you, you can forgive <laughs> that me for that. That is true. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I looked this up just before and it surprised me. You know, can you lay double digits late in the year with a team that has a losing record and they're on the road laying seven or more points? It's only happened 13 times since 2015. Steve, not only a perfect 13 and 0, both the Bulls and Rockets fall in that situation, but they have covered those big spreads by 10.85 points per game. Now, I will say this. When you go to the database, you know, you can have a losing record and still be playoff bound. So that's the Chicago Bulls. They're still playing. I mean, they face Atlanta as the number nine and 10 seeds. The winner of uh, they're still fighting to see who hosts that game, but they're playing in the playoffs. Houston's a different story. They are out of the playoffs. They've been eliminated. So the database only gives me the true data. Knowing if those teams had playoff need or not is something else I'd have to dive into a little deeper, but I can't quantify that in the database. Yeah, it really is remarkable, though. Not only 13-0 straight up, but you're saying 13-0 against the spread as well, correct? 13-0 against the spread. They've won those games by 20.9 points per game. The average line is minus 10.1, so they've, wow. they've covered the games by over – almost 11 points more, winning by 20.9 points per game, covering by 10.8 points per game. So when we have a quantifier like that and the ATS margin is that huge, that certainly makes an angle much stronger than something close, closer to the Mendoza line. Yeah, that's something so important to point out. Ralph and I have done a lot of videos and shows over the years about how to use back testing and you know, systems and handicapping. And sample size of 13 games normally is a little bit of a red flag, but when you have that kind of margin of cover, it's incredible, and it's not a situation that's going to pop much, so that's why the sample size is small. And it makes a lot of sense, Ralph. You know, It almost correlates to what we've talked about a lot. The lowest totals go under, the highest totals go over. It's counterintuitive, and I think for someone to lay double digits with a losing team is counterintuitive, and that's why the line is way too short. And once again, it's basically covered by double on average, and uh, that, that qualifies the uh, Bulls here that's gone from 9.5 to 10. And Oh, by the way, I like Chicago for other reasons. This is my free play of the night at wagertalk.com. I post a free play every day on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And what I mentioned in the analysis there is that the Bulls have three games left in the season, maybe, but they come in on a two-game losing streak. And the fact they are playoff bound, like Ralph said, I think they want to get things going. And they're going to take advantage of the opponent here, Detroit, who has totally tossed the towel on the season. And this is a Pistons team that's now lost 13 of their last 14 games straight up. Um, so I like the fact that the angle backs up the situational handicap as well. Definitely recommend taking a look at the Chicago Bulls minus the 10 points tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern. All right, now let's look at another game that was talked about earlier today on Wager Talk Today by Tony Finn. You got out just in time, Ralph. You missed Tony, but he came on after you. And uh, the uh, Knicks actually were his play is a 2.5 
point favorite in this. Tony was doing the show at 12.30 Eastern. The line was ticking to three in some spots. And now, just like the bipolar nature of the NBA, the Celtics are favored again. And we saw this a few days ago when I was on Wager Talk today, Tuesday. I used the Milwaukee Bucks plus two and a half on the show for a free play. And by tip-off, the Bucks were minus three. We had a five-point move in that Celtic game. Celtics became the first team in the history of the NBA. I still think this is fake news. I know it's been verified, but I still don't see how it's possible that the best team in the NBA this season, the most dominant team, became the first team in the history of the NBA to not shoot a free throw in a game. I still don't see how that hasn't happened at some point. And the fact the best team in the league is the one that had it happen to them is just remarkable. Tells you a couple things. First of all, in the new NBA, there's more threes, less taking it to the hoop like back in the day. So I guess there's less shooting fouls. And the Celtics also just weren't being aggressive in that game and maybe looking not to get injured, which makes a lot of sense because they've locked up the number one seed for about a month now in the East and the overall number one in all of basketball. With that said, though, we had 10 players on the injury report earlier today. They were questionable or out for Boston, but the big names were all questionable. So now, Ralph, that this line's gone from plus two and a half to Celtics now favored by one and a half to two, tells me that maybe Tatum, maybe uh, Jalen Brown, maybe some of those guys are going. They have nothing to play for, but they are coming off that loss. What are your thoughts on this game? I mean, it's very tough from a database perspective to research that kind of stuff, but just what are your thoughts initially about how this game might play out? Well, Steve, I tweeted this as well. Boston was the first team to not shoot a free throw, but in the database, there's 38,000 38, NBA games since 1996. Only 28 times has a team attempted two or three or free throws. Boston and Milwaukee wow. both did it in the same game. I mean, you want to talk <laughs> about a box score, and I have the exact same mentality as you. When you look at a box score and you see Boston zero for zero for free throws and you see Milwaukee one of two, well, listen, you know there's no defensive intensity. It's like an all-star game. Ole, go ahead and go to the net. So while I would like the Knicks and I would like the under in this situation, I still lean with the Knicks, but there's no way that I can trust Boston. And you look and talk about defensive intensity, the five games prior to Milwaukee, the defense, 39.5%, 45%, 43%, 38%, and 39%. Then they allowed Milwaukee to shoot 53.1%. So we can say, well, maybe they're going to have some defensive intensity back at home. You know, they don't want to blow that home winning streak. But to me, there's only one way to go. It's fade Boston and play New York. And again, while I would like the under in this situation with New York trying to get the number two seed, you know, uh, I can't trust the Celtics without knowing what their what their mental is. And, you know, we can guess, but there's a lot of better situations, guys, whether to try to guess the motivation of a team that has locked up the number one seed and at home. There's no reason to risk that. I'll pass on this game. Yeah, and as much as I'd like to make fun of Tony Finn, and who am I kidding? I love to make fun of Tony Finn. This line moved about 15 minutes after, about 10 minutes after he was done with his analysis, about 1245, 1250 Eastern. It went from Boston plus two and a half to minus one and a half. But in defense of Tony, it was because the injury report went from questionable to available. All those key guys I mentioned are now available on the injury report. So that's what you're talking about, Ralph. It's pure guessing game how much they're going to play. They're available. They might play, but they might play five minutes. So we'll see what happens. The uh, total, by the way, went from 215 to 217 instantly a few hours ago when that line moved. So that was the thought that Brown, Tatum, Berzinga, some of these guys, Horford, all been upgraded to available, <laughs> which is definitely trying to read between the tea leaves here with the NBA, NBA injury report. And I'm with you. Um, I have a strong best bet tonight on one of the games. I did a free play video and also a free play for a couple games. This is not one of the games I'll be involved with of the five tonight. Uh, the one edge we have as betters is they've got to put a number on everything. We can pick and choose where we pick our spots to play, and I think there's too much uncertainty in this. But it was crazy to see Boston, the best team in the league, 35-3 and three straight up as a two-and-a-half-point home dog earlier today while that lasted, but that is no longer the case. Celtics are now a one-and-a-half-point favorite. And don't forget, if you're watching us live right now, at 427 Eastern on Thursday afternoon. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the live chat, whether it's YouTube on Wager Talk TV, YouTube Shorts on your mobile device, or of course, Instagram Live as well. I'm going to start checking these questions in a moment, and Ralph and I will circle back and answer as many as we can. 
All right, Ralph, two down, three to go here on this five-game NBA card. And I know you've got an opinion on this one because you talked about this game on uh, Wager Talk today earlier, Rockets and Jazz. You like the total, so let us know if you're still looking that way. And also, if anybody missed the show and they're too lazy to watch the replay, give them a little sneak peek on what you talked about. Well, Steve, I actually talked about the Golden State game. I'm sorry, so you're right. You know what? I think Mar- Marco D'Angelo Marco did. You, you almost called me total, Prez, right? so I just called yeah. you Marco. I'll do this. Marco liked the over in this game, and his logic is something I use a lot, and you kind of hinted on, is that when the two teams don't have much to play for, and these two teams have nothing to play for, they're both eliminated, that we kind of look at the over because there's less defensive intensity, and you talked about that with the Celtics Bucks. So I do want to get your thought on that correction. It was Marco D'Angelo. Go back and watch his analysis. Uh, but, Ralph, your buddy and my buddy Marco likes over 227.5 in this one. I would not disagree. Well, you know, you look at Houston. And, you know, we, we know they made the incredible run that they made. You know, I think they reeled off 10 straight wins. And then, you know, what happened down the stretch, they played some very difficult teams and, and they struggled. You look, at, you look at Houston's schedule down the stretch. Dallas at home. You go to Minnesota, you're a dog. You host Golden State, you're a dog. You host Miami, you're a dog. You go to Dallas, you're a dog. And then you play Orlando and you're a dog. You're finally a favorite after playing one of the toughest stretch of schedules anyone's had. But to me, you know, Houston had lost five in a row. They won 10 in a row, then they lost five in a row. That knocked them out. They're a young team. They want to set the mentality. And you've got to remember, this Houston team now is 39 and 40. When we do some college football, TNA, Steve, or in the bowl games, Many times I've talked about how teams are one game under 500 or they're 500 playing a bowl game, how that truly does motivate a team and the ATS records show. Well, Houston talked about wanting to finish with a 500 record or better. So if they beat out by winning at Utah, at Portland, and at the Clippers, they will finish above 500. Now, you know, at the Clippers, we saw who the Clippers played last night, so there's a chance they could do that. We know Houston's a double-digit favorite today. We know they're going to be a double-digit favorite against Portland. Uh, That is with no rest tomorrow. And while they've been a good favorite this year, I don't like them in this role. Now, I I look back at Utah and I go, well, since they covered against Oklahoma City on March 13th, they have covered actually two games. They lost by one to Houston at home as an eight-point dog. And... They beat Golden State. Well, they lost to Golden State by eight, by covered by four. But when I look at Houston's schedule, the letdown in the role, them having played their final home game against Orlando last night and two nights ago and winning, now finishing with three road games, I think this line is too much to hide. As far as, you know, you look at defense, you know, Marco has has a very solid point. When I look at these two teams over the last six games, Houston allowing over 52% shooting. In the last five games, Utah allowing over 50% shooting. So no issues with the over at all. I do worry about Houston in this spot in a letdown against competition. I don't know if they're necessarily going to let down off their final home game of the season. Yeah, and what's interesting to me, Ralph, is that that collapse for Houston after that remarkable run that almost got them into playoff contention. They could only have done it a couple months sooner. They wouldn't have been sweating things, so they really were playing good basketball. Uh, The fall started on the defensive side. Uh, That five-game losing streak, which they just snapped with the win over Orlando, they'd given up 49% shooting or worse at all five. Uh, There's just no question what happened. They went from playing some really good defense for a while to playing no defense. Um, So Marco D'Angelo once again broke this down earlier on Wager Talk today. Go back and watch the replay. It's here on Wager Talk TV. It's archived. And um, I would agree with the over. I, my short list, I'm always looking to play non-playoff teams over the total late in the season here in the final week. And uh, once again, though, as uh, Ralph talked about earlier, double-digit road favorites with a losing record, 13-0 and against the spread, covering by almost a 100% margin. 10-point average line, 20-point average win is really incredible. Um, and that's something that's worked for several years now. And the Rockets are actually up to minus 11. Open seven, up to 11. So, Ralph, it does look like the betting markets, I don't know if they're necessarily onto that trend or not, but both of these lines are rising. And I don't want to say you're moving markets, but as we're doing this show live, the Bulls have gone from 10 to 11 now. 
And uh, once again, the Rockets have gone up a bit as well. They're on the move here. If you check the Wager Talk live odds screen, you can see it lighting up like a Christmas tree. Houston just went from 10.5 to 11. So maybe, just maybe we've got some sharp money movers watching Wager Talk TV here because that 13 and 0 angle is catching some steam literally as we're doing the show live right here on Thursday afternoon. Don't forget to include your questions here on Wager Talk TV. We're also on Twitter live. You can watch us through the link there if you're on the go. Let's look at two more games and we'll circle back around, try to get some viewer questions on the way out. New Orleans, Sacramento, you know, Ralph, this is probably the spotlight game of the night, you know, with Boston's uncertainty against New York. Uh, Sacramento and New Orleans teams that still have something to play for, still in that playoff hunt for seeding and positioning. Uh, should be a pretty good one here. What are your thoughts on this game at 10 o'clock Eastern? This, by the way, is the TNT national TV game, the late night game. The Celtic game is the early game. Yeah, you look at Sacramento, you know, they're four and two against the spread their last six. They covered as a big favorite at home against Utah. They've covered at home against the Clippers. They go to New York, lose. They play great at Boston, lose by one in cover. Go to Brooklyn as a 10-point favorite, blow out Brooklyn, and then play OKC. So that was the final game of a four-game road trip. So they're now home for their final three games. But it's a very tough go. You're looking at hosting New Orleans. You have Phoenix at home tomorrow. And then you get a day off and you finally get to host Portland. You know, I look at New Orleans and New Orleans uh, impressed me going out to Phoenix, playing well, beating Phoenix by eight as a six point dog. They did what they had to do against Portland. I'm, I'm not worried about a 10 point game, you know, and they go to Sacramento, Golden State and the Lakers. Both teams have incredible pressure. I mean, New Orleans is in the driver's spot, but going to Sacramento, playing at Golden State with no rest and playing the Lakers are the exact teams bunched in that 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, you can't get a better schedule than those had. What does concern me is, is the Pelicans' D of late. Over the last five games, they've allowed 49% shooting. But on the flip side, you're playing a Sacramento team that over the last five days has not topped 48.8%. In fact, these are horrible numbers for Sacramento. They shot 42% against the Clippers, 38 against Boston, 42 against Brooklyn. It's not many teams that shoot 42% against Brooklyn as a double-digit favorite, and then 34% against OKC. You know, what do we have in this situation? Well, I, I think I will go with the under in this. I don't have an opinion on the side, but I truly believe there is playoff mentality in this game. So the playoff mentality means Sacramento Sacramento knows their offense is struggling. They know their defense hasn't played well. You look at teams like New Orleans. They've been a dead under team the second half of the season. 11 overs and 20 unders. We look at them when they're playing a, a good offensive team. They slow them down. Five overs and 11 unders. And then when I look at Sacramento, when they're playing a team with a winning record the second half of the season, eight overs and 15 unders. To me, this is a playoff mentality game. Both teams are playing for that seeding. And uh, color me the under in this one, Steve. Yeah, and by the way, Ralph did. This was not Marco. This was definitely Ralph because it was a chart. Marco doesn't acknowledge charts. Ralph had a very interesting chart on Wager Talk today earlier. And it's a little foreshadowing for the NBA playoffs next week about when unders work well. And there are certain rounds in which they work really well in certain situations. But in general, I I talk about leaning over in these meaningless games late in the season. I'm always looking for reasons to play under in meaningful games. I cast a strong best bet Monday night with the championship game between Purdue and UConn under. It was the only college total I'd used all season. I just thought it was a great matchup. Two big guys down low, playoff intensity. And this game should have a playoff intensity. First of all, Sacramento is a half a game in the eighth spot, only a half a game ahead of the Lakers, who are ninth. Yes, uh, New Orleans is in the sixth spot, but they're only a half a game ahead of Phoenix, who's in the seventh spot. So the reason that's important is eight teams make the playoffs, but with the current format that we've had for a few years, only six teams get locked in right away after Sunday. The seven and eight teams play each other. The winner is in. The loser gets one more chance, but they still have to win a game. The nine, ten teams have to win both games. They have to beat one of each other and then beat that loser of the 7-8 game. So very important you finish sixth or higher, and even more, very important there, but almost as important that you finish seventh or eighth because you can lose one of the two games. Otherwise, you got to go 2-0. and So 
this is definitely a spot in which both teams will come focused tonight, and Ralph likes the under. It makes a lot of sense with that playoff intensity, which is not something we see a lot of here in the final week of the regular season. Uh, once again, if you're watching us live on Wager Talk TV on YouTube, welcome. I see a life in Vegas. Jave Cash, I know Jave, he's always here. Great to see both of them. They're loyal viewers. Eric Rose in the house as well. And don't forget uh, John Valentine. Valentine, there's no E, so I don't know if it's Tyne or Teen. He said, Steve or Ralph, Warriors, first quarter and first half. What do you think? Well, Ralph, let's get right to that game. It's the last one here, and I know exactly what you think, or at least what your son thinks. You gave out a free recommendation from Jeff earlier, uh, but I don't disagree with you on this. In fact, I did a free play solo video earlier today, and I've taken the same approach. Um, I like the Warriors full game here, minus the 13 to 14. Uh, you pointed out earlier this week, about a week or two ago in Wager Talk today, that double-digit road favorites in the final month or so have been very good plays. You just talked about that one angle that both the Bulls and Rockets qualify. But double-digit road favorites in general have been good money makers. It does concern me a little bit, though, that Golden State has a no rest tomorrow against the Pelicans. The three games and four nights coming up. This line, as we're speaking, is dropping a little bit back down to 13 and a half. But I do think the first half at minus eight, seven and a half, eight might be a safer play, Ralph. Do you agree? I do, Steve. I'm going to jump back one second, uh, Steve. While sure. you were talking about the uh, playoff intensity late in the season against winning teams, this isn't a wow number. But there's been uh, 1,100 games since 2000. Divide that in half. So there's been 560 games since 2017 where we're game number 76 and later, and both teams have a winning record. The over-under is 45.5%. So 250 Hmm. overs, uh, about 300 unders. So about a 54.5% to the under. But at least it's good to know, Steve, that the mindset that we have does hold true and you can quantify it, that there is some, uh, it does make sense. You have two winning teams late in the year, the last few games of the season, and those games have tended to go under the total. Uh, As far as this, I had my MLB game rained out. So uh, right before wager talk today, so my son had, had sent me his free play. So I stole it. And basically he said this, you know, the Warriors are, are playing great both offensively and defensively, winning nine of their last 10. And their only straight-up loss was on the road with no rest against Dallas as a dog. Golden State on the road as a favorite of two or more, 11-1 and one since February 2nd. And they've held their last nine opponents to under 45% shooting. And in fact, you can go all the way back to March 16th since anyone has topped 49%. Portland's offense struggling down the stretch. They've allowed 42% the last six games. Now, he pointed out that Golden State does host New Orleans tomorrow, a very important game. So it's a situation where, you know, he went first half. But I will say this, Steve, you said you're worried about Golden State playing the Pelicans tomorrow. This season, the Warriors are 12-1 and ATS if they have a game on deck the next day. So they're the best in the NBA playing with no rest for the upcoming day. And, and they've done very well in that role. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I like them tonight. And I, once again, you could split it half on the first half, half on the full game, a little bit of an emotional hedge, just in case, you know, they do take their foot off the gas. But um, that's one of the reasons I like Golden State because they're still in a situation. They could sneak in to that top eight spot. They're at 11 and a half games out of first one game out of eighth, though. So they're going to need some help to get there, and they got to leapfrog the Lakers as well. So they're going to know after tonight, most likely, if they really have a chance still to get playoff positioning and not have to play the two games, the two wins at least. Um, so I think they fully take advantage of a weak Portland team tonight for that reason, and they know New Orleans is not as winnable of a game tomorrow. So that's another reason I do think they come focused here. Uh, so first half or full game, I like both of them. Uh, Ralph, you talked about this last week as well. And I've mentioned it several times. You know, last year we saw one of the most extreme home road dichotomies in the history of the NBA with the Warriors. Very strong at home, bad on the road. There's no doubt in my mind we've seen the biggest reversal in home road dichotomy for one season to the next in the history of the NBA because now the Warriors have been the best road team and weaker at home. It's been incredible how much that has changed this year. I mean, do you have any theories on why or is it just something maybe they focused on because they just weren't good on the road last year? 
You know, I don't know. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it's almost unfathomable to look at those numbers. You know, I, I will bring this up. On the show this morning, Teddy made a great point about uh, the Warriors this season have seemed to play very slow in the first half. And he said, are you worried at all about them coming out in the second half, you know, where they've seemed to have more intensity? I did go to the database. And, Teddy, I'll give you a shout out because uh, you are spot on. When I look at Golden State as an away favorite since the beginning of February, they have only outscored foes by 3.9 points per game in the first half, and they've outscored them by 10.8 in the second half. So almost a seven-point difference, which is probably the biggest in the NBA looking between the first half and the second half. But again, I think their mentality is to come out and you know, you look at what they did last year on the road. You know, you said it, Steve. Uh, you know, this year, uh, I'm looking at the best, uh, forgive me while I'm typing and going to the database, in the NBA this year, just to give you an idea, the top two teams both have a 27-13 and 13 against the spread record. That's the Warriors and the Mavericks. The Heat and the Grizzlies are the next two, followed by the 76ers. FYI, the worst teams on the road this year, the Brooklyn Nets and the Atlanta Hawks are both 13 and 25 against the spread. And of course, Atlanta, a couple months into this season, had maybe the worst point spread record in the history of the NBA to start for a couple months. So not surprising they would have a bad point spread record in general. Very surprised that the Grizzlies are in the top four, though. Obviously, they've been a big underdog in many of those games, and I guess they've stayed within the number, but that's a little surprising to hear Memphis on any kind of profitable list uh, this time of year near the end. Um, once again, it makes sense also that Golden State turns it on in the second half. Maybe the mindset, Ralph, is that you know we blew some games on the road last year. We're not going to let that happen, and they are a real veteran team. Um, but once again, they do have a big look ahead tomorrow with New Orleans at home, and then they finish with the Jazz at home on Sunday. Uh, they're going to need some help, but they could still sneak into that top eight spot and have to win one less game to make the playoffs. So I think they come focused tonight. And uh, those are the five games there. Gary Walker saying hello in the chat. Gary, good to see you as always. He likes the Kings tonight. We also got some NFL draft positioning talk. My goodness, I love it. The NFL sneaks its way into everything on Wager Talk TV. Chris Brady likes Bo Nick's draft position under 32 and a half plus money. Not going to disagree. I haven't really dug into the NBA, uh, the NFL draft rather. I like Caitlin Clark. Over half, uh, under half number one pick. However, you can get odds on that if anyone will take that bet for the WNBA draft coming up. But that's about it. Um, Jay Price likes Kings and Pelicans over. And um, he, we got some other uh, talk here in the chat as well. Got a little bit of love for the under 227 and a half between Houston and the Jazz by Jay Price. Uh, that's what makes the markets two ways, right? Overs and unders. And uh, Life in Vegas has a question we'll address here, Ralph. He says, I always talk about playing the highest totals over, the lowest totals under. What other advice criteria do you look at when handicapping over unders? Well, I mean, first of all, that's just a very small snippet, something I look at when I'm making my short list. I'm always looking to be contrarian in nature when handicapping sports in general. Of course, I do the Fade the Public series, and that's a very contrarian indicator also. Um, I think Ralph and I just talked on something, though, touched on something in the show itself, which is important. And when there's a lack of intensity, especially in a sport like the NBA, it shows more on the defensive side. And look, you can't make an argument against that. Look at the All-Star games recently, right? Whether it's hockey or the NBA, there's obviously no intensity or motivation. It's pure offense. Whereas once we get to the playoffs, and like Ralph said, just on the blind, winning teams play each other late in the season. It's been an underplay just on the blind the last few years. And he has a great chart on Wager Talk today, earlier this afternoon on Thursday, about the playoffs, how you can use that as well. So once again, just in general, motivation leads to defense lack of motivation leads to more offense that's another way i make a short list when handicapping totals in any sport uh ralph any other general over under advice for the nba or handicapping in general for any sport i guess steve i did throw that chart up on twitter at cal sports lv i mean take a look at the over unders by rounds and especially take a look at the ats home dogs the last five years in that role you know i, I will say this um when it comes to the playoffs, I'm going to just throw out these numbers, Steve. First round, the overs went 46.7%. Second round, 46%. Third round, 48%. Finals, 40.7%. So you're basically saying 
that every NBA playoff game since 2017, excluding the bubble playoff year, which was in Orlando, where you didn't have that home court edge where you get the defensive intensity, is basically 46% over or 54% to the under. When you have a sample size of 400 games and you're going back since 2017, it takes a lot for me to bet an NFL, excuse me, an NBA playoff game over the total. Now, you know, we've seen some different teams. We see some teams that shoot the three more and don't play the same defensive intensity. So I'm never going to say I'm never going to use it, but I really do go into those rounds thinking I'm going to look for the unders. If an over pops out for me, I have no problems using it. But uh, I can guarantee you the majority of my totals plays in the playoffs will be unders. Yeah, and another way to look at it, too, is teams off a bad showing, especially like a bad defensive showing in the regular season. A lot of times I'll look for an under, whereas maybe if a team has a bad offensive outing, you know, I'll look at an over because they usually want to fix what wasn't working. What's tricky about overs in the postseason is that every single NBA playoff game after game one, one of the teams is coming off a loss. There's no other way it can be. So they're always going to bring the intensity. So we can start looking at team totals maybe in that role as well. And um, another thing I like to do with the NBA postseason is the zigzag. And Ralph's going to have an updated zigzag chart next week. And be sure to follow him at Cal Sports LV on Twitter, as he'll have it on there as well, along with wagertalk.com. Um, but when we talk about the zigzag, too, I love digging into the box scores, Ralph, from the previous game. And with over-unders, you know, sometimes teams will shoot lights out from three, lights out from the free throw line, but the pace of play was slow, or vice versa, where I do find overs in the postseason is when teams were way below average shooting, but the pace was fast, and then the odds makers bump it down two or three points for the next game. So it's a great way to use the uh, zigzag is to dig into those box scores like we do in college basketball with second meetings. Uh, definitely can find some value with over-unders as well. Uh, I will tell you this, Steve. Uh, I was I was running to the database, and uh, guys, if you want to hear any of this kind of information, I will be having a guide on my homepage by, uh, by Monday. Uh, reach out to Twitter, tag me if there's something you want to see, even if it's not a great record. I have no problems running it because Steve and I talk about this all the time. Well, why do you say something's only 50%? That's not actionable info. Well, if your mindset is that it's something good and it's 50%, you need to adjust your mindset. If your mindset is you thought it was bad and it's 50%, you again need to adjust your mindset. But Steve, I did look at NBA playoffs the last five years. If the team lost as a home favorite in the next game in the playoffs, those games have gone under the total 61.4%. So wow. sort of a zigzag philosophy, but the better team is off a loss as a home favorite. They tend to buckle down on defense. And again, those games have gone under the last five years in the playoffs to the tune of 61.4%. Yeah, that tags onto something else you mentioned on the Wager Talk Today episode earlier this afternoon that's still archived right here. I recommend going back and watching it on Thursday. I co-hosted it with Teddy. It was press-free. You are safe to do so at your leisure with the children around. It's G-rated. It was a clean episode. But, Ralph, you mentioned that double-digit home favorites, I believe, if I get it right, a double-digit – no, a home a team off a home favorite loss, right? It didn't matter if they were home or away. A team off a home favorite loss – in the first round was a very strong play in the next game, not so much later on. And I said that makes sense because in the first round, the better teams are playing weaker teams. You know, you get one eights, two sevens. So if a team loses as a home favorite, they lost to an inferior team, they bounce back. And Ralph is also adding on an over-under tilt to that, saying that those games have gone under over 60% of the time recently, and that makes sense. The better team focuses, locks down, and probably plays a lot better defense as well. Steve, all right, I ran the numbers. Uh, this is playoffs round one. You didn't have to be at home. You only had to lose as a favorite. So if you blindly in round one played every team that lost as a favorite, you have gone 59% against the spread since 2017. So, and, and it's not as good rounds two, three, or four, because what we talked about today was round one, you have the one, eight, the two, seven, the three, six, there is clearly a superior team. Well, if an eight seed beat the number one seed, they're not playing like an eight seed in the second round. Same with the seven. So you have a much tighter or you have a more competitive game. So 
that is something just for round one. It does not translate later into the playoffs. And once again, Ralph's going to have more of this next week, so stay tuned here on Wager Talk TV. Check out his page at wagertalk.com and follow him on Twitter at CalSportsLV. And he's posted some of these charts that we've talked about today. They're up there right now. So you can view them, archive them, save them for your handicap, and hopefully this will help you win more games in the NBA. Uh, we'll be doing the NBA show throughout the playoffs here, live 415 Eastern Monday through Fridays. I'm also going to have some videos, some solo videos and the game preview videos up for most of the playoffs as well. So yet another reason to click subscribe and hit the bell as well so you never miss these shows and the free play videos. And if you're liking this content, do us a few favors. Comment below. Let us know if you want to see more of this analytical research, if you want to see daily NBA shows and videos throughout the playoffs. Yay or nay, comment below. We read all the comments. We reply back. Let us know who you like tonight on the five-game NBA card. Throw in some player props. Ralph and I don't dig too deep into the props, but uh, throw some player props in if you like them. And also a thumbs-up like goes a great way to keeping everything content-free here. But uh, Not content-free. There's lots of content. Keeping the content free on Wager Talk TV. Thumbs up, like, comment below, subscribe and hit that bell. Um, once again, thanks to everybody in the live chat. We saw Michael B. Travis in there, Chris Brady, once again, Jave Cash, Gary Walker, Jay Price, all you guys, a lot of loyal viewers. We appreciate it. Thanking Ralph. They're thanking Steve, but we appreciate you watching. That's why we do the show. I love talking to Ralph about this stuff, but it's more fun when we have hundreds, if not thousands of viewers as well watching. Um, Ralph, I've got an NBA best bet tonight at Wager Talk, and I've also got a free play posted. So I recommend people check that out. And uh, tell people also about the great NBA special. You know, I did the math. 74 days remaining through the finals in late June. 188 gets everybody's NBA, whoever you want to choose. No promo code needed. That's a two and a half dollars a day for the rest of the NBA. I'm ranked number one this season. I'm ranked number one all time in the history of Wager Talk in the NBA. So I love the playoffs. I know you love the playoffs as well, Ralph. So take us home here. Let us know about that great special. And what else you got going on at wagertalk.com? NBA playoffs the last two years, Steve. 70 winners. 41 losses. That's 63%. Yes, I do like the playoffs. How nice will it be on Monday to be able to, to break down a basketball game in the NBA and not have to look at freaking load management and that damn <laughs> injury report? We finally get NBA players playing with motivation. I'm so happy for the playoffs. Yeah, we say that, but I feel like last year we thought the same thing. We started seeing some questionables and availables and probables and still weren't 100% sure, but you're right. If the guys can play, they're going to go in the NBA postseason. It's a different type of handicap. I was 29-17 and 17 last year in the NBA postseason. I love this time of year, and it's not a coincidence that Ralph Michaels and myself, Steve Merrill, we've been doing this for 30-plus years. Uh, we have found ways to win in the NBA postseason. I think it's the most consistent moneymaker in all of sports, the angles at work. And the situational analysis at work year after year keeps happening because the NBA, once again, they're serious come playoff time. The best of seven game series also really makes it a nice handicap. The NCAA tournament is tricky because it's a one and done. You know, variance, three point variance in one game can make it very tricky to handicap. And in the seven game series, the cream usually rises to the top. Uh, Ralph and I have done extremely well. And look, that 188 special, you don't have to get just one capper. You can get Ralph Michaels and myself, Steve Merrill, get both of us for just 188 each for the next two-plus months, every NBA selection for the rest of the season at wagertalk.com. No promo code needed. All right, great episode. Once again, thank you for the questions. Keep them coming back here on YouTube and the live, uh, the, after, after the live show and the replay, we read the comments, we reply back. And also, if you have any database questions for Ralph, if you want anything, you want him to search, he's going to have all that up next week, that little playoff guide. Drop it in the comments below. He'll try to do some database research for you as well. Or hit him up on Twitter at Cal Sports LV. Follow me on Twitter as well, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for some more great basketball and baseball content coming up next.